Right. Hi, everybody. And yeah, I'm back. Sorry. So the little trip across the pond, we got back, all right? Bob, yeah, I got back fine, mate. All right, bit of a late night, but we're back. So a few hellos, a uh, few thank yous. So we did the AW. Um, so who do we say? Met Mark from Woodchuckers. All right. We're working wonders, all right? Great crew, the crew there. They really helped me out, all right? So both of those stockies have got Chuck Centers and that sort of thing in the States. So if you're interested, it's there. So Chuck Centers, those two companies, really good, all right? Then obviously a trip down to Washington, a few clubs. So caught up with Bob P, Tom, a few of the other guys. Fantastic to meet you all. And so many people saying they're watching the videos, which kind of makes it feel good. All right, that's a bad way of phrasing it. So thank you all for your hospitality and everything else. So today, we're going to work on small box. Got one other thing. Bob P, um, um, Marshmallow Man, it's on the way at some point, okay? I promise, I'll get it sorted out. So today, we're going to do little box, sun hat box, okay? Um, I've made these for quite a few years. Beautiful little box, a little bit technical. I'm going to make this look easy. I'm sorry. Okay. So that's our little box challenge this afternoon. Okay. All right. Nice fitting lid. I'm a bit fussy about my lids. You all know. This is a bit of laburnum. We're going to use a bit of laburnum. Just stuff we have. It turns quite nicely. It's a lovely little shape. Okay. So let's get on. We need drive center. Going to go with pro drive. Tail stop center, ring center, my favorite center, no matter where I go, right? So the guys, when we've just done the trips, they know that had one of those. Let's get that in. Oh, a bit of laburnum. Nothing really characterized on here. I have already marked the centers. Someone's going to say, how did you mark the centers? Set of dividers. I've measured out, try and keep as much of this beautiful weight upward as I can. So just literally looking for the middle, all right? Nothing too technical there. We can do the same the other end. So we've got a rough idea of being pretty central. The other end, I've got a little bit of where it comes up to a knot. So here, so I've taken that into account, hopefully. Let's bring this up. Get it on there. A pro drive, I can just spin. It's got a spring pressure on the tip. So at the moment, I'm working on that spring pressure, How looking at how equal things look on there, how balanced it is. That's good. Bring that up. So we've got Matt doing the computer side this afternoon, so hopefully everything will go all right. We've gone live. That might be good. So speed's on. Let's just gently come up. Just checking our tightness. We've got the side handle. We want a raffling gouge. Let's have one of those. Just gently bring the speed up. So about 1,800 now. Handle down low. Gently raise it. Taking that high spot off. Now I'm looking at the far side at the top. Gently along. So if I drop the handle down, no pop, gently raise it. There we go. Let's deflect some of that. So someone's going to ask me, size a piece of wood. This is about 85 mil diameter as a log, and actually about 80 mil long. So it's about equal. And we want clean cylinder. Let's have a quick look. I think we're pretty round. Do that up. Kept most of our white sap. That looks really good. Want that beautiful contrast we're going to get. We need a set of ring calipers. Chuck. Pencil. Chuck jaws. Let's get the pencil. Oh. I want to work on a true circle. Weird thing I tend to do. Let's put that pencil in there. That gives me a good diameter to work to. Just bring that out. So we're aiming for a true circle. I've got a set of serrated type jaws, gripper jaws. So they're going to bite in a little bit more, which give me a bit more grip. We then need beading tool. Now, handle down low. Gently raise it. Tell I've been away. Look, let's see if we can do a little bit of sharpen. Both sides are just diamond card. Hopefully that will cut a bit easier. There. 
second arm. I still got a little bit to go. Tiny bit. We're doing what we've done, set up with a pencil. It's going to be a better optimum grip size. Small surface contact. Oh, a little turn in either end. A little bit to go. That's good. Let's have a quick look to see what we got. Nice and straight on the turn in. Next thing, you don't have to worry about a bandsaw cut on either end. You won't quite see it on there. So it varies in height. But you've got the jewels are nice and straight. I haven't got to worry about levelling that off. We can grip that. Uh, but no risk of it bottoming them out, if that makes sense, on the bottom of the jaw plate. Quick change then to a tape pro drive out. We can take that ring centre out. So we we'll lose both. But then back in here. Chuck and go on. What should we have as top and bottom? Yeah, not too much. Now, the top one here, I'm looking at the white sat around the edge. More of a constant band. If I flip it over, a little bit thinner this side. Let's have this as the top then. So that white sat would hopefully will look more constant all the way around that lid. Just checking where we're loaded. I've got a little bit of hand pressure. We're obviously not quite pushing equally. Okay, we can go with that. Let's do it up. So this is the 100 mil chuck. We now need pencil. We've had it. It's up there. We need ruler. Something to measure with. I'm going to sneakily do a little bit. So we've got 70. We want a third. So coming down to about 23. Okay. So one third for the lid, two thirds for the base. Next thing we're not going to do, not going to bring the tailstock up. That's going to cause it to bind, snag. Start to create lots of heat on the side of the little parting tool. So one sixteenth as a parting tool. I can even bring the tool rest over a little bit. So I'm working over that centre stem. Handle down low. And cut on our line. Not one continuous cut. My right arm wiggles a little bit side to side. So we'll open the cut out a bit as we're going in. 40 cents is so important for this. Just monitoring it, working off the light, a little bit off the light bed. Get about half inch to go. Down to, now at this point you could start to maybe get your Japanese saw ready. There we go. All right. Now we're not having that tail stop pushing We've got no weight pushing up, pinching, as we said. So that's quite an important part. If this gets too hot, it's going to burn the wood fibres, cause it to crack before we've even made the box. More problems. So at this point, let's take that off. Bring our tail stop back to give me a little bit of room. Bring this round. So just looking where I sat with it, it looks good. Quarter inch bowl gouge. We're going to do the rim bit first. I do a slight almost undercut type thing is the best way to describe it. So put around the toe rest, rest the bevel, gently come up, there's our shaving, come back, select how much. So let's go in, gonna push down, bring my handle to me. We'll do one more. Rest on. Select it. Drive round. So working on that rim bit first to create a nice little bit of curve. This is about in reality moving the recess point that's going to be inside away from the outside edge of the lid so it pushes it down a bit in other words you don't get a two-part lid there is nothing more embarrassing on this box than ending up with two parts that kind of don't fit together so that little curve adds a bit of decoration but really about giving me more success then we're going to clean up that little parting cut just a little bit so a bit around the tall rest push my left thumb change weapons so we've got small spindle gouge and a duck gauge. Just sighting how deep we can go. I've got a little bit of material on the chuck. It has got 
spur marking, so I need to go a little bit careful how deep we go. That looks good. Skew chisel. We want to find our middle. There it is. Going to drill a hole. So small spindle gouge lined up with the lathe access. A little bit to go. This is giving me a depth hole to work to. Just short to do that tiny bit. Good. Next day, quick fast bolt removal. So we're going to have the flute on its side. Finger and thumb. Flute 12 o'clock, 11, 10, about nine and a half. I need to get to the hole. So we're just going to come up just a tiny bit. Finger and thumb. Gentle. Bring this outwards. Just trying to look on the camera, trying to keep my fingers out of the way, so probably from the side camera you'll see a bit more. Let's get a bit of support. So this is about being fast and quick to remove that bolt. Okay. This stage I've got tiny little bit of hole to clean up. Having to feel with the fingertips, a little bit ridgy. So let's start to clean it up. We're going to turn the gouge over 180. I'm going to use the tip. I'm going to come inside. Bring my arm out. Find the shaving. Drive it round. All the way to the middle. Look at body movement on this, which you can't really see on the camera. So from there, handles across the lay bed, come round. I'm shifting my weight constantly from my right to left foot. Fingertips again, what's going on? Uh, how's that flow? That's not bad. Just want to lightly clean that up a little bit more. So we've got my round nose scraper, right? Refinement tool. We've used this quite a few times. So we're going to go into the middle, up and down. Gently bring that out. Look at that, isn't that lovely? Into the middle again. Got a tiny little dot. Got to come up a tiny bit. Nice light pressure. I don't know if you can see really on the camera. I'm almost controlling this with fingertips on the handle. Nothing too aggressive. Just about cleaning up more than anything else. Chasing a little bit of a flat I've got come from the centre. That's better. Make sure I've cleaned up that parting cap. We need a flat one here. I'm going to just dress that. All right. Body stance has changed. We're gripping around the toe rest again. Nice and lightly on that. Okay, good. Inside the lid, most of the shaping now is done. I'm going to come back. Let's have a look, have a feel. See what we've got out on the edge. Nothing there won't clean up. Just got to turn the extractor on. We've taken the tool rest and the banjo right out. Fold the abrasive up into three. This is some 150 grit. We've also taken the lathe down to so about 700 of the sanding space. Not the dust out of it. So a lower speed stops you cooking those resins on to allow it to clear that dust better. Fingertips again, how's that flow? It's nice. Just do that little hollow curve out here. So as we said, the 150, this is gonna do all the hard work. One five, go to two four. Again, lots of support, left hand, open to support that while we sand it. Too cool, let's have a quick look. Check we haven't missed anything. 400 and you want one. Then we can fold it into three. Right on your fingertips down throw. Right? 
Okay, good. Hopefully. Now we've got to do a nice little straight lift inside the lid. Uh, let's just have a quick look. We've got to cut that recess. Right in there. Hopefully you can see it if I bring it around. I've got a little lip in here. This bit got to be nice and straight, dead parallel. So my magic oval skew. So we can use this lighter, less to push. No handle means I don't have to push it around my body. And that's one of those weird things. I think, Matt, if we just have a quick look on one, right, if I have a handle, I've got to push it round more. Right? It's longer. I've got to be back here. Almost comes round your body. So I've got to swing with a handle. With this, nice and light. Very delicate. So I can use the side edge. We can also use the tip. So I expect we go back to two. That would be good. Look, I can bring the speed back up. We can use the side. I can also use the tip. So I'm not having to travel so far by not having a big handle. I can push more equally in a straight line. I've got to admit, as I get older, though, I've got to start checking things. So set the expanding calipers into the back. Come forward. What do I get? Get a little bit of wiggle there. Go into the back. Set pinches. Setting up at centre height. Come forward. Tiny little bit on the front. So I've got a taper going towards the back now. So I need a little bit more out. Now this is good secrets of fitting a lid and base together. You have a nice thing with running the calipers down like this. It tells you if there's any little lump or step that you've left. Maybe you haven't got one continuous straight cut. You'll feel it pulling it back out. A tiny bit. Okay. You're trying, you're seeing what's coming off really light tight. That's better. Now pressure now is equal as we pull down through. Nothing suddenly jumping in on the calipers, nothing pulling in as I go down through now. So that work well as a little tip. Measure it. If you want it to be dead parallel and fit nicely, this stage is fundamental. Okay. So we've got those. They can go back up on the wall. We want a little bit of 400 fish. We've probably got a little wispy edge at the bottom. Why do I do the sanding before I cut that recess? Simple reason, I get a straighter, better finish. If I cut it first and then sand it, I'd soften the corner. So at this stage, what am I doing now? Cellulose sanding sealer. All right, so this is cellulose based. This will have that building block for what we use over here. The guys in the States, yeah, you can get this. I saw this at the Walnut Tree. Or the walnut log, isn't it? All right, as a company, craft supplies in the states do this. Obviously, in the UK, we're spoilt with this. All right, we sell it. Okay, chestnut sanding sealer. So, get that there, wipe it off. All right, so we can get that excess out, not with the lathe going. You've got a little cut on your finger, you'll know this will sting a little bit. Okay, so make sure you wipe it off by hand. Quick friction dry, a little bit of heat that'll do. We now need a little bit of wax. I said a little bit. Look, it's the tin I found in the cupboard, the little tin. Oh, micro crystal wax. So the guys, again, we've just been, we use some micro crystal wax. Similar thing, all right? Non-petroleum based. So we need to put it on. Now, when I did this for the AEW, I got this question go up about the fact of, do you need to let this dry? Yeah, but we haven't got 20 minutes. Um, Matt knows my jokes aren't that good. All right, my singing is even worse, guys. So normally, if you can, give it about 20 minutes to pull in. Right, let's go for a buff. All right. So a little bit of sawdust as well. Just going to clean the stuff out, or the wax at the bottom. That groove. Let's get that. Let's see what's going on. That's given us a shine. Now, when you really put the wax on the inside... First bit done, all right. Inside the lid, turn it round. Good, that runs through. Some of the guys we did a show about a month ago, we did Makers Central. I made one of these at Makers Central, okay, in front of the audience. Uh, we didn't do any sanding, it took me 20 minutes. So I'm trying to slow things down a little bit by doing some sanding. Gonna measure. 
So vernier. What do we have? 52, okay? And again, this is stupid things I never used to do, but it makes it more successful. 52, half of is 26. Go to there, I want a little bit out. Skew chisel so we can find the middle. Using that long point flat on the tall rest. Squide the line. The left hand leg of the dividers needs to be sat on the rest. We can measure it. Double check it if I can see my line. Oh, well, where has it gone? There it is. Okay. So just a quick double check can be good. Next stage, tool rest, try and work directly over this pin. I want as little amount of vibration as I can get and maximum support. There's my line, I can see it. Feeding tool handle down low. Just looking at how much depth we've got or a lamp we've got on there. So we're doing a peel cut. Nice long saving. Now I hope my math is any good. Drop a little bit early, okay? So same technique I tend to do with most of the boxes, but have a quick look. We've got a little bit to go to my line. I'm already changing the style of cut. We've done peel cut. We're now doing what I would class as slice. Now with the slice cut, I get the left hand side of the tool level with the top. Not down here. There. Finger. Left hand, I tilt this. So my fingertip actually curls in underneath, so it lifts up the right hand corner. Body stance is important that the handle is down the side of your body, not any angle on here. All right, so if I move my body position feet wise, that's going to affect what's happening. So I need to be straight. My left foot near is outside the leg headstock. I can go there, lift it, pivot it across. So my right finger and thumb now becomes a pivot point. Slide it across. We get a nice clean cut, more controllable. So we can start to adjust the lid fit. This stage, we're taking a bit off. Just trying to see my line. I think I've just clicked the top of it and just feel it almost. Just start to fit on that front, nearly going on. Deliberately now, we're getting a taper on this section. Very difficult to show you on the camera. I can try and do with pencil thing. That gives you an idea. I push the pencil into that corner, that kind of angle. Other camera, you just did Matt was better. That's good. Okay. So let's do one more. So same technique. Lift that corner. Go over. All right. Just going to go to here. Just want to have a quick look. Just don't to fit this. I think we go to the overhead. We'll show you that. And then we're doing, all right. All right. So just fitting on on here. If I turn it over by hand, I get a shine line appearing down on here. That's telling me where we're fitting to. Such an important part again. This whole lid fit is the fundamental part of any of my boxes. Got to get things nice and good fit. We've got our shine line. I can take a little bit of material out the back now. So again, I've now come onto this step, not level with the top. I'm lifting the corner gently on the right-hand side. We can take a bit off. Squaring up that shoulder now. Just see where things are, a little bit to go. So we do a, a slice cut. Be careful there, I've got a little lump in the corner. We're clean in a minute. That's not bad. Let's just get that little lump. So I've just picked up my skew, clean out the little bit in the, the corner. Just want a little bit off of there. So nice and gentle technique with those two tools. Get our lid so it fits on. All right, we know we're going to get a gap here because of that shape we put in, that curve. Next stage at this point, if I turn my lid to the shape we want, let's just grab it. Little sun hat shape. I'm going to struggle to get it on and off. All right, so if I turn it this stage now, like this, we'll struggle to get it on and off. 
Um, there are a couple of ways I can get over it with you. I can sell you another chuck so you've got something to grip the outside of the lid and pull it. Oh, let's create some access. So we're going to remove the bulk. So I'll get it again. Chip of the gear, we're going to start to knock off the waste. You only drive around. Gently coming down. See what's going on. Need to check our size. Check how it's fitting on. Now, at the moment, I've got a step between the lid and the base. You won't see too much on there. All right, so in reality, the base section is bigger than the curve coming in on the step. I want to get them to blend together. Still got quite a big step there. Let's cut down some overhang. Look up. Changing the body grip a little bit. Left hand. Just going to go to there. Let's just take this down. And then we'll have a look with that. Fingertips. Nice and steady. Get this to fit nicely. I might be able to swap it around on the chat and show you. Tiny bit. Gotta do something weird now. I'm gonna to go to my skew. Just want to find this lightly. I'm tilting it. Not holding this split. This is the lighter cut than I can achieve off my gouge. This is actually the sheer cut I can work either way. With my rounded section on the bottom, that skew should have slurred along the rope, which all rests nicely. Carefully trying to pick this up. Look what we just cut off. Isn't that lovely? Put my lid back on. Comes together better there. Tiny little gap. I've still got a gap. The gap is caused by my tenon section being too long. I'm the way, Matt. All right. So then, just going to alter this. Again, we've got that grip around the tool rest. Um, that to there. A little bit off. Going to soften that edge. I think I still probably need a little bit more. Those things together. Let's pick the pencil up. Okay. Matt, what have you got? Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, got a question from Fuller. Uh, do you ever match outside calipers to the inside calipers for sizing the shoulder? No. Um, you could do. And if you think about I can see what you're thinking. You were almost saying you could actually probably measure that and then go internal. You could do. I like the aspect of using a vernier, measure it. Okay, so I can measure it, set the dividers up, create a definite scribe line on the end. Okay, if we go with what you're kind of saying and go with the external calipers I've got over here we used earlier, yes, you're coming down to that, but you're transferring it one to the other. But you could do it, might be a little bit quicker. Okay, I like the aspect I create a scribe line on the end, it gives me something nice and clear to see. All right, so at this stage, it's quite tight. All right. Keep an eye on that. We're not going to take any more off there. I'm just playing around, just seeing what's happening as I pull it on and off. That looks pretty good. We can move a few things about, get rid of some clutter. We've got to do our lid shape now. Okay. At this stage, we've given ourselves access by removing all of this to put the lid on. I'd be able to get my thumbs in behind to push it. If we'd left it square, once I shape the lid like we're going to, it's going to be really difficult to take that material off or get that lid on and off. Don't win that. Don't need that. So, got our bowl gouge. All right. Guys are quite shocked that I'm doing spindle work and I use a bowl gouge a lot. Great for this. You get a little bit of wobbles. Let's find out why. This looks brutal. There you go. One of the guys said in the States, that, all right, what, what do you think the handle's for? So, we've got tip the bowl gouge, thumb just supporting it. No tail stock. If I put the tail stock in place and the lid wants to come off, I'm stopping it going anywhere. I will burn the tenon that's holding them to that lid and base. Just checking when I'm coming up. I'm coming up to the bit where he held in the chat. You can see it wavers a bit on here. So I've got to make sure I dress it carefully. Now we're working on one curve. Thumb. 
handle's got a lot of movement again, okay? So my handle goes out wide, away from my body. I swing my body weight round a little bit and follow that curve. My left foot is on the outside edge of the leg down near the headstock. That's giving me access point to swing this handle. Getting right in there, bring that up. Come round with our curve, keep it running. I've got to move left just a little bit. Stretching now, don't you look on main camber. How much I'm kind of leaning with my body. From there, what's this bit? Now I've got to move. A lot of body movement on here. Shifting my weight between my two feet. Okay, let's have a look on here. Let's see how thin we are. Not too bad. Got a little bit back there. This feels at this stage actually a little bit rough. That's that rough down stage. I want around it. Best thing I can use, the abrasive. So much easier. If I try and come in with the here without the chisel now, I guarantee we'll chip it out a little bit. So, move things round again. Let's get the gouge. Cutting down the overhang again now. So we've done one long curve as a sweep. Numerous cuts to produce that simple curve. Now we're going to worry about doing the opposite shape, coming round. And this shocks people. Why not try and do it all in one heavy go? or continue that one cut. Let's work on one shape, then we can work on the other, then we can blend things together. So now we're going back to that top corner. Tip. Push. So handle's got to go around a bit more. Now my body stands near and more in line with the line. My left foot come inside the stand now. Again, I've still got to shift my weight to my right foot, extending this cut. Left arm's doing a lot of work again. So we've got most of our dome shape. Pull our lid off. Got to get into this bit now. Fingertips, where and what? I've got a little bit more thickness in the top, a bit thinner here, so I need more material coming up. So I'll put it back on nice and gently. Check it's on firmly. Run it, check it runs through. Back in. I want a tiny bit, I think. There, coming up. Take a cut, push round. Tip of the gouge, handles travelling out. Slow the pace down in the middle. Slow and moving. Give it time to cut it. One cut. Have another look. Take it off. What are we aiming for here? Um, bone china thickness, three mil. Okay, so I'm constant. So just feeling what's going on. Thicker in the top, comes down. That's not bad. Again, a little bit to do it around the top, a bit more. Having a feel here as well. I'd like a bit more up there, but I think I'm going to get sneaky on that bit. Just a bit more curve. We'll blend that in a second. We want a tiny bit up here. Have a look again. Got a little step in here we're going to clean out. Pull it off. Fingertips again. What's happening? Where have we got? That's not too bad. Check out fields. Check it runs through. A little bit refining. I still have got that break cut that I've got in here. It's a little line. I've just picked up round nose, so my special scraper, not as aggressive, so a bit more control, I can use this, down to there, nice and lightly, pulling that contour together, the lighter cut again as we said earlier, then I can probably get off the gouge, spin that round, I've got change of contour coming around to the top. I could probably have stuck with the round nose one, but let's go to the skew. Doing that sheer cut again. Right in the middle, come back. I can work either direction with this, so it'll be nice and light then. Real delicate shadings. Okay. How does it flow? Is there anything here that won't stand? That flows nicely. I kind of lid off. Not bad thickness now. And again, getting my fingers in, feeling everything, see what's happening. So important to on these. We're trying to get a nice equal contour and good flowing shape. That's nice. That looks good. 
So at this stage, I'm going to put it out of the way. We've got to do the base. We need depth gauge, small spindle gauge, set of depth. Okay, I've come down, I've probably got, oh, I can measure it, let's have a look. That's, ooh, where we got, that's 43, I want to come back. Okay, I'm probably leaving a good half inch in the bottom at the moment, I don't want to get down to, I've come up about half inch, that seems a lot, but we're going to clean up a bit. Middle, we've got our V, small spindle gout, I've got to come up fractionally into the centre. Do lower that pole. A little bit. That should be enough for a minute. Back to our bowl gouge. Just drop in the toe rest so we can get level with the bottom of the hole. So we can get the tip of the gouge into there. Blue again on its side. Coming out. Handle got a grip over the top a bit more now. So, yeah, lean out across the lathe a bit more. Just seeing where we are. I reckon we need a bit more at the bottom. Or in the cut in the middle. Want a quick measure. That gauge down to there, just seeing where we are. Just having a feel how much undercut we created. Want a little bit more out of that. We'll take a bit out of the middle. So lining up using that side wing. Tip the middle. It's gonna come back out now. Gouge right on its side. Quite brutal as a cut. Okay, good. We've got a bit of undercut. We need to clean up a little bit more. What we're trying to do, hoping you can see, get right in under this nice and cleanly. Okay, that's our aim. So we've got to clean up a little bit at the moment. I've got a bit thicker. Major thing at this stage that's important to show you is that wall there. Nice and wide, not too thin. This I've left quite thick and chunky. Uh, what are you, Matt? You're on have a one that close up. Yeah, okay. That's showing a bit more. So I've got real good quarter inch. I will refi refine it later. This will absorb the vibration at the moment. Henry Chatter, stop the risk of it cracking down through the body when you're hollowing it. Okay, so that's quite an important part, that little step. To clean up with, I've got a couple of options. This is something I've had for about 30 odd years. It has little triangle tip. Square bar, all right, so we have that. Let's have a close-up, Matt. Let's just go in a little bit on the, okay. So triangle, square bar, got the chip mounted underneath. This actually is tungsten, which is really weird. This is an engineering chip with a radius edge. I can use that to get in there. More recent years, you could have one of these things. All right, so let's have a go with either. Let's try with this. All right, I'm quite used to what I've got in the hand beforehand, so it'd be good to have a go with this. So we're going down, we want to come down a little bit in height from that side edge. So gently pushing down, at this stage I'm working on looking at the outside body of the box and lining up the handle angle, that angle there. Okay, so almost straighten that line. Get my fingers in, have a feel again. Okay, so same, I've got a bit of thickness still. So, curl by tip, work nice in underneath there. And again, at this stage, I'm not worried about the bottom, just this side. Okay, here I are working down to a thickness. I've got to come across the bottom and clean it up. We've still got a bit more on the side yet. So back in again. Ooh, bit of noise. So let's drop our handle just a little bit. 
other thing that might be good let's have a little bit of angle on the toe rest more supported squarely on the toe on the bar all right so parallel cross it will be better just have a feel what's going on trying to check our thickness okay call them out what have you got uh, so i got a question from fuller with the grain orientation shown is there a tendency for the piece to assume an oval shape you can do whatever shape you like okay I'm obviously looking at and I'm working down. I've got to work down that side with the tip coming down to the bottom, okay? Um, Relative, I'm trying to now think of supporting grain fiber. It's just more controllable. I also do a, a more bulbous shape that comes down to a narrow foot, the opposite almost of what we've got here. Got a different shape cutter to fit in underneath, okay? So that will play a part in what you're trying to do, tip-wise, tool-wise, and everything else, okay? So that is an important part. Obviously, with the tip we've got on here, I'm looking at, where we can come down to, how much overhang I've got to have. I've got to lean across the lay for this a bit. So, just going to get back in there. Nice and gently support the bar as well. So, I've brought the tool rest down to a squarer, but less likely to want to tip the tool. That's a weird and wonderful thing. If the tool rest is across it, I find it wants to roll it. If it's square, more controllable. Back in down to the bottom now nice thing for what we've got hold of so these you would cut with it having a round tip i can control it working down the side it also means it doesn't snatch when we get to the bottom if you had something with a square triangle corner oh it'll bite so that's working quite nice just playing around with a bit more undercut Now, I'll make you guys feel good today now. This is the first time I've played with that as a tool. I was tempted to go with my little triangle one, but that's difficult for you to find. So easy wood cut in here, working quite nicely. I can do centre. Up and down the middle a little bit. Just places I can't get too easy with certain other tools coming out. So centre out, which again, we're working on a pivot point. Left hand out to that edge. I've got a little bit more movement with my arm to come out. I think I've got a little step I've left. Let's clean out some waste. Now, center point, I've got a little dot coming out to the side, not too bad. So I've got to get in the middle and then we need to check our depth. Up and down. So let's have a quick feel, make sure I've lost the dot. Probably got a little hollow in the center, I have. Now, it's the only bit I really want to look at. Um, Matt, can you go back to one place? So I don't, even with this, and it's one of those weird things we're doing the courses and teaching it just then. I do now, I regularly. I picture what I'm trying to cut my mind. I don't need to look at the work. I can feel what's going on for the handle. The risk with this is, if I've got the tool here and we're working, and I want to have a look, I bend my knees. I push the cutting chip up. All right, that's flat. This would go up, hits the top of the box, it kicks a handle. So that whole body approach of where you stand for this can be really important. Try and get into working with the handle, feel what's going on. Try any lump in the middle still then. So. Drag it out. Good. Get that tip, that'll go. We're in underneath, not too bad there, the shape goes nicely. Let's have a quick look. Okay, just beyond. So where are we? Ooh, down to there, got a little bit. Right? We still got three eighths of an inch, 10 mil, okay? So that was quite nice to work with. Matt, what have you got? A uh, question from Frederick, what size do you recommend for a wall thickness all right so the lid we're down to three mil this is a little bit thicker here and one problem bit you've got to watch here is you've got at this stage the square step on this shoulder okay coming up to the lip all right you know what it's like there so you've got that straight got a square bit if i undercut too much on here 
this lip will come off. Nothing more annoying, all right? So I've got to go careful how much I undercut here. I don't want to basically clash it and meet this bottom corner from the inside, all right? So this is possibly a little bit thicker. The lid I try and get to three mil. Nice equal thickness, okay? If you're gonna have a go, get yourself confident on where you wanna get down towards a thickness, especially if it's first few boxes. Technique is more important than maybe pushing yourself to get really thin. Success is a, a growing thing. It makes you feel good. If you get it wrong, you won't have another go. So try and think about how thick you wanna go. Now at this stage, we've got the bottom's not bad. We need to refine this wall now. My skillet, so I'm gonna come out. Using that side edge. Why am I coming out? If I push and I've got a little bit left, it smashes off. It shatters. If I come from the centre outwards, a little stages, and then clean up the last little bit, it's more controllable. It doesn't shatter out. How thick are we there? That's not bad. So wool thickness for Frederick, really. I probably got quarter inch down through a little bit thicker than the lid okay shape wise that's not bad in under checking what's going on we now need to put the extractor on i'm just going to also grab something i need in a minute look we need a jam reversal chuck we have that look okay let's do the extractor i'm not really ignoring you all right just need to make sure it's big enough that looks good All this planning you can do for these videos. You think I haven't been away for two weeks, I'll be good by now. So inside, we've taken the banjo right back out the way. We've folded the paper to three again. Speed is down, 700 in underneath. Now by folding it, I can bend it on my fingertips still. I can grip it my hand. The left hand come into play again, so important help support things working on the middle out to that corner work that little radius edge back forwards the change ends tighten that up a bit look so this first impression thing of sanding and finishing is so important again and round. Go inside. That's not bad. Outside. Bring our shake up. A little bit turning over. This shouldn't need too much. We've still got the back corner to do. We could possibly, I'm just looking at how much space we have. Let's bring that just back in. Small gouge again. So this is spindle. Bring that round about so with the gripper jaws i've got being longer than a dovetail i can extend this shape at this stage and save me a little bit of work in a minute and a high spot on the edge comes up to a v that's better take the speed back down i brought it up to cut it Blending that high spot in. <laughs> That'd be a first. Catch your bride up in a chuck jaw. Pull that round. There's that high spot. That flow nicely, not bad. Now we want our lid. It's on a little bit easier. I can loosen it a bit more in a minute if we need. And sand down through. Let's radius that edge. So gently taking the sharp corner off, blending it into both sides. Not trying to hit too much what was already sanded on the underside. So 150, hopefully. Pretty good. Again, fingertips. What's going on? 15 done. 240 now. In, radius that corner I can even bend the paper so 
That's the impatient way of pulling the lid off. So I curve. Inside, so we we'll make sure we fold it again. We've got three layers then. Makes it stiffer, easier to control. Just looking there on my hand, center point's the tricky bit to get. Out to the corner. To the dust. Right, little chap out is good, especially on the inside, it'll plug more, it can't go anywhere. All the way up round to the lip, so I'm radiating that front opening now. Ooh, a little bit of work. Should be good, 400. Just feeling what we've got, good. hundred across the bottom back round I live back on a minute we've got to do the outside of the base as well I didn't push that one right but it'll be okay look good. Checking our edge up on here, that looks good. Checking our lid fit. Bit loose than when we started, but I could soften this now. Haven't sanded any of this at all. Hopefully normally wouldn't need to do too much to this. I still want a nice fitting lid. The wax will help it fit a bit in a minute as well. Let's just skim that back and only with the 400. Okay, so for a minute let's turn the air off. Sealer. Still got one thing to do on the outside, but let's just do the sealer in there. That'll give it a little bit of time to dry. We can wipe it off. I can put my wax in there. Wipe off that excess coming out. Friction dry it. Just check I lost the pencil line we had on the outside. We have a little bit of a micro crystal wax inside there. Last thing I want to do on the outside before I put the sail on, just checking our lid fit. That's not bad. This is our 400 grip. I'm going to turn the paper over. I'm going to use the back. Just like more of a burnisher. Make it a bit shinier. Okay. So that's quite good. Back of the paper again. So next thing and a few of the guys, definitely for the guys in the States. Over in the UK, we get the Hermes blue paper we sell, which is cotton but Really good. A bit more flexible, easier to work. I know the guys in the States, when I visited workshops, you get lots of paper back. Um, I know you get uh, self adhesive as well. That could be good. You could stick it to a rubber sheet. Cloth back definitely lasts a bit more and works really great that last stage we've just done. Use that cloth. That looks good. Bring our lid back on. We can seal the outside. The only reason for putting the lid on really was the fact that it means I don't have to hold it with my fingers. That's good. Wipe that off. Okay. Let that off there. Looks nice. Beautiful colour change in that. A bit of clean paper. Again, other questions occasionally get, do you ever sand wet? If I'm using some exotics, coca bowl or might, or African blackwood, might use water. I can wet sand with wax and even then get away with still use. The cellulose sealer, the cellulose will cut through the wax layer, which can be nice. Okay, so the wax can act as a lubricant to keep the dust down. 
That's not too bad. That's good. Right. Okay. So we're done inside. Nice. Let's have a quick look. Move it about. That looks clean. We want something to reverse it with. So I've got to have something as a jam chuck. So this was on the shelf. So hopefully this will work. A bit of pine. Going to hack it about now. Oh, it cannot be big enough. It looks big enough. We're soon going to see. We want parching tool. I want to lose this funny ski slope. Same rules we did before. Part in a living base. No tail stop. And to support it. Now, with the dividers we have, we set them up. We haven't changed them. If I was doing a series of boxes at home, I'd measure them all. This we know, and we can re-measure. And this maybe goes back to Fuller's thing, doesn't it? If we measure that, we have 52, 26. I want to bring them in because I wound them out to make them big earlier. So 25, that's not bad. This is easier definitely to do for this stage. So we're going to make another lid in reality. Why do it this way? If I do anything that fits inside, I can crack the bottom of this box. Split it down for you. There's not a lot of support. There's that ring, but nothing lower. So all we've gone back to doing this. Out nearly to my line. Just using the side of the gouge, flute right on its edge. Side wing's nice and square on this, or straight is the best terminology, towards the tip. Don't want them undercut. The tip in the middle shouldn't be undercut either. It should all be level. Ooh, just a touch over. That's not a bad thing. We can go to the next box. Or just take, go to there. Take a bit off. Just clean that up. I've got a ragged edge. So now I know I've got to widen this a little bit. That's good. Point the skew on the pie and actually I can cut nicely pushing into. Got a little step. I can still see that's good. A little bit of patience. Close. It's amazing how much a little bit seems to be, isn't it? Doing a light cut near the top now. Now I'm getting nearer. Just trying to see if that'll just about fit. It's not far off. That'll fit. Magic lid fitting solution. The guys I've just worked with will know what that is, okay? Check it runs through a little bit out, that side. That's still a tiny bit. We're going to use the gouge on a minute, so let's have that. The pine fibres will compress nicely a little bit. That's good. Now we can do something with the base. So this box shape, I've probably been making oh, 30 years. That's a scary thought. So thumb's working again. Push across. Funny grip on the handle in reality and on the tool rest. This is working nicely to give me a bit more control. This I'm going to have something as a flat bottom. Okay, so we can have that there. Trying to pick up a little bit more. Work to the middle. We can come round to there. And I've got a tiny little bit of that step left. Let's bring that round. The skew chisel just to lightly cut those fibres. I don't want to take too much more off. I'm blending into what we've already sanded. I'm going to leave that little step. I want to clean it up. And there, I need to check we've got no chuck jaws on this as well. In reality, I don't want anything as a compression mark on this little step. The chuck jaws by in will show. If I run my fingernail on there nicely, nothing. That's good. Next step, check. It's hollow. That's great. 
one five two four four hundred. We have those. We run down the other end. Put the air on. Too much speed. Bring it down. Just checking where we are a little bit. Fifty two forty. Let's double check. Got the number written on there. That's good. Don't you come around? Bring that out. And that little straight step. Take the sharp corner off it. So now I'm just curling it around with the two forty grip. Soften it in a little bit. Bring that up round. Four hundred. Back of the paper, furniture. Let's have a quick look, check things look all right. Ooh, down a bit. A couple of lines, more decoration than anything else. So point the skew. Back to the sailor. Wipe the brush off quite heavily. Don't want loads on here. The big brush though. Dealing with fingertips, how the shape flows, that's good. Take that out. We need to take the chuck off now. So let's do that polish. Now most of you will have seen, but I'm always amazed on gonna go with the twist and fix setup. Just really was here and ready to go. So we got that there. I want a brown compound on a stitch mop. Put that on twist. How much easier could you want that? Brown compound to wet and cut back the raised grain off the sealer. I can work in any direction. Look across it. This is mildly abrasive. So the compound, and we've said brown, look. I've got a white one as well. Brown compound is this. Okay. This is a polishing compound, first stage for steel and brass. It'll do wood though. Okay, so a little bit. You don't need loads. First bit done. We need to do our lid. That one up on there. Work round it. Hold on to it. Cross the top, around the edge, and again, do you think we're not getting circular ring marks like you would on a lathe? The finish will look better. This is filling the little end grain holes. That's why the colour is important. If you go with a real pale white wood, or maybe a bit of pine, it'll add colour. I don't want that. So on a pale wood, you wouldn't want that happening. On the laburnum, I can get away with it. I don't know why the sapwood doesn't draw it in. Changing the muck. Loose muck. A little bit of carnauba wax. Again, the so carnauba is a glossy hard wax of a palm leaf in Brazil. Speed-wise, this is interesting. About 1800. Too fast, you can actually burn the wood on the surface, especially on the first mops. Work it round. Got a line there. Let's work across. I've missed that. Back across that way. Good. Underside. That looks nice. We can do the edge. Let's have a little bit more. Smells good, this. Working round again. Hope this in that polish come out, that shine. Really important on the little boxes and stuff. I want something that's going to hold a shine and not go dull within the 24 hours, a couple of months' time. When I put it in a gallery, I still want it looking good. Just working around where things are. That's quite nice. Let's move that mop. So that's loose when not stitched. The first one, stitch mop can be better. A bit harder to work off. Setting mops will last me about 12 years. 
that's good going for a setup. So put that back. Our lid. Let's put that back on there. Hopefully. Isn't that lovely little pop. Look at that. Oh. I've got our shape. Hopefully that's quite nice. Now, like I said, one of my traditional boxes that I started making years ago. Love making these. The lid, quite uh, an intricate thing. They shape, not bad. Comes down quite nice and clean in that corner bit. I don't know how well you can see the undercut in there. I think you can probably see it nicely. Okay. Little step underneath just to raise it up so it sits up off the ground. Looks like it floats a bit. Beautiful shape lid. Love doing the shape. Um, and it's taken on to different places, different boxes. Nice equal thickness. I get people saying, how do you make that? If even have one guy, if I have a press, if I can push these out and a, a magical pressure with a piece of wood that, yeah, right. I haven't quite got a former for that. So it takes a little bit of effort to get it down to that nice three mil. Hopefully. I don't know where I can sit in there. Will he sit up on there? No, it's round. All right. I'm going to hold it. All right. Let's go main one. I think the mat. Hopefully you haven't got any more questions. I'd probably talk too much and won't get too many. All right. Thank you all guys for joining. All right. Hope you've enjoyed. Quite simple little box for me. And I make that one look so easy. The lid takes a bit of effort. Okay. But that step-by-step -step will hopefully give you everything you need. The polish wise. Oh, definitely. And again, we're going to the States. It's quite interesting to talk to the guys out there about, you know, different things. The polishing mops. Oh, wow. Couldn't live without my mops. I even took mops with me to polish and use out there. So that was the important part. Guys over here, you kind of say, maybe we're spoiled. I don't know. Okay. Hope you enjoyed. Give us a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. They'd love to see this one as a box. All right. I will see you in a few weeks or next week. Probably. I can't remember what we've got coming up. But something will happen. We'll be here for more Wicked Wisdom. All right. Hope you enjoyed. Look after yourselves.